Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Denver Broncos, Kendall Hinton. We are diving into the entire situation, every throw, offensive breakdown. We're going to get a little soapboxy as well. So let's get it started. Welcome to the QB School. So I try to make this channel as upbeat and kind of positive and reviews about how we're talking about quarterback play, how we're learning more about the game. But occasionally uh, the film will make me so upset that these things kind of twist and turn and become a little bit more soapboxy than probably I normally intend. So uh, give me a sec here and just let me talk through this process because this was tough to watch. And, uh, and I really feel bad for Kendall Hint Hinton and really the whole organization and teammates. Uh, so really want to talk about three different prongs here. First, uh, the quarterback situation in Denver. Obviously, this is a lot of it on them. They knew the rules. They didn't abide by the rules. They put their organization, team, everything in jeopardy, uh, jobs, safety, for them to not follow the rules. And don't get it twisted. I understand not everybody is going to wear a mask every single time that they're asked to wear a mask. And that's not necessarily the intent of the comment. It's more about what the role and the optics of playing quarterback is like at every level, but especially in the league. And to let your teammates down like that is not something that I think can be easily overcome ever as far as second chances, winning back your teammates. It would have rubbed me the wrong way in so many different levels. Next thing, uh, the league. Uh, the league loves to talk about protecting the shield, about uh, always having the best interest of the league at heart. And really, I think what they put on the field Sunday with the Saints versus the Broncos was not in the best interest of the league, both uh, potentially health-wise for people out on the field, certainly performance-wise for the league, uh, you know, product on the field. For me, you know, I understand what they're trying to do as far as the rules, the money involved. I'm not naive about how cutthroat the league is. But at the same time, I do think that there occasionally is so much flexibility around this epidemic, disease, pandemic, that normal rules are really thrown out the window. And everyone is so flexible and adaptive now that you kind of have to be able to mold and go case by case all the time. I know that you're trying to make an example. You're trying to say, you know, there are results about how people do and don't follow rules. And I get it. I do. But at some point, the product on the field diminishes so much that it's not worth it. And I bet that there are some people in the, in the Broncos organization, specifically players, and I'm just speculating. I don't know one person in the organization that probably wish they didn't play that game. Just be it straight up. Watching it on film, there was never a chance. And I know it's a lot easier in the NBA to do stuff like that with smaller numbers. Uh, guys, you know, guaranteed money, different stages of their life, those types of things. A lot of people de depend on those game checks. But at some point, it's not worth it. And that performance, that game without that position, for me, would have at least had a dialogue within the building. Because there was never a chance. It was always going to be a heavy lift, but there was never a chance. And then the next one I want to talk about is the coaching play calling for what's going on with Kendall Hinton. Uh, in my opinion, it was not only dated, but also uh, just <sighs> the right word to describe it, almost malpractice. And what I mean by that is it was them trying to fit him into what they do. And if you're going to be in that situation, and I, not all of us have been in that situation. I haven't been in that situation at that level. But you essentially have to scrap everything and start anew and say, what are you comfortable doing? How can we create those opportunities? You can't go out there and play spread football. You can't go out there and do drop back stuff and make him read or do nakeds like you normally do nakeds. It's a different player, a different type of situation. And so there was such an opportunity there for me uh, to see things that I didn't see on the film. Would, would love to have seen more screens, more unbalanced, more opportunities to throw on first and 10. If you're going to have him throw on second and long, third and long every time, give him an opportunity to be successful. 
or run the Wildcat in crazy wide edges, formations, get big, get heavy, and just live there the whole game. But then if you're going to do that, the first pass of the game, it's third and three, just run it twice. You know you're going to have to do that to win the game. So there were game strategic decisions I didn't understand. There were play calling, play design things I didn't understand that I was really frustrated with and just empathizing for what it must be like. I honestly could not imagine having to go from the practice squad. I've been on the practice squad before. From the practice squad to playing quarterback within 24 hours. And I was a quarterback. Now flip that and be like, go from the practice squad as a quarterback to playing wide receiver on a Sunday. I, I, honestly, I, I don't understand how it not only is it safe that anyone thought it was a good idea, that it was doable. It just, it doesn't make sense to me on so many different levels. And then watching the film, it just started to really bubble and empathize with this cat. Like he has no chance and you just hope he survives because he's getting thrown around and it's because he doesn't understand how to play the position. And I get it that you're not going to learn in a day. And that's the thing that I'm talking about. That At some point, this thing probably shouldn't have been played. Uh, so apologize for the soapbox. You probably didn't come here for that, but every once in a while you get it, what you don't ask for. And so now let's watch the film, the video to actually see it. I think that there are some things to learn from. It's not the only time this has ever happened in football. And so people will need to be able to be adaptive with what they do. It doesn't always uh, result in a W by any means, but I think you can put your players in a more successful situation to have uh, a little bit more first down, a little bit more movement in the, in the game, a little bit, you know, just a better game. My goodness, it was uh, difficult. So thanks so much for making it through it. Let's dive into the film. All right, soapbox over. Third and two. First third down of the game, first throw of the game, first play, a little sprint right option. Throw it away. I don't have a problem with the decision. I think it's the right decision. I think it was there if the footwork's correct, but to assume that he's going to get the correct footwork right out the gate is tough. Watch the little delay he takes. you got to catch this and go. That little delay, now you're behind everybody. Everybody's taller than you on the field. You're behind everybody trying to make this throw. To me, this is a bit of a dinosaur call. And what I mean by that is it's just dated. Like there are better ways to get to the flat than sprint right option with the lead blocker in the backfield. So when I say sprint right option, it's basically just we're rolling to a flat. This is the old uh, Dwight Clark play. He didn't run the flat part of it, but right there, Dwight Clark, the catch, I think he went to back of the end zone, back like this, little whip route. But the ball's supposed to go right here. And it's there for a first down. Some deficiencies in the scheme for me is with the back right here, he he's going to widen, and this pushes everybody wide now because he delayed just a sec when he goes to run, and he's looking, he's looking through all these bodies going this way. It just, I, I would much rather prefer them to do it to the tight end side so everything happens at the line of scrimmage a little tighter. You can see, I mean, they blitz into it too. That doesn't help bringing the nickel, but it just widens. I mean, you can see he can't see anything. Look at his shadow where it's lined up. It's right in the, you know, Looking over probably a 6'8 right tackle there. Guy looks like a skyscraper. It's going to be tough. Just, But for me, you know, is that on him? Design? You know, for me, it's probably the design more than anything else. I get what they're trying to do. Get him a quick, easy completion. How about a perimeter screen? How about something where we get, we secure the line of scrimmage? You see what I mean? If they were to roll to our right, their left, see how tight that technique is on the tackle, on the tight end? He'd have a better chance of logging him or getting into him earlier. With this super wide nine here on the left defensive end, you know, coming from outside a ghost tight end, it's going to be hard to get any sort of width. And the right tackle does a pretty good job. It doesn't help that they blitz to the edge, run a little game, you know, to widen the edge. Absolutely, it doesn't make it easier. But I like the decision. Cool, calm, good decision. First play in the NFL. I mean, pretty unreal. Third and 12. Now, the situational football is just horrific that they put him in. Really embarrassing. This one is a play that we're going to see a bunch. A little inside fade with a little stick route, one-step stop up, up top. He chooses the backside go route here. This really should be an interception. They bring four weak, causes some issues on the back end with the running back blocking. See 27 coming off the edge here. You can see just that little miscalculation about who's got who in the zoo there. Whether it's the left tackle who's at fault or the back is at fault. Someone's at fault. It freaks the quarterback out. Now he has to run around. Now you don't see a whole lot of guys who play on Sundays normally do these types of throws from the pocket. 
And that's just the pass pro letting him down. Fortunate not to get a pick here, but worth going over this play because they run it a bunch. Third and 12, obviously. No good answers. No quarterback is going to be successful very long in third and 12 life. But scheme-wise here, they throw it down here to probably whether it's a fade or a hitch converted to a fade. Up top, they throw the, you have the inside fade that they throw or later in the game, and they have a one-step little looky or smoke. And then this looks like a stick route or an option. Teams run it different ways. This little stick or option right here. So inside fade. Fade, he's obviously comfortable with this because they call it a handful of times. You know, to me, this is probably the right spot for where the ball to go should go. You can make the argument that maybe, you know, here, if you, but I think then you're starting to get into the play and read it. You know, this, they probably told him, hey, you get a fade, you get a go versus press coverage. Let's take a shot. Third and 12. It's pretty good. Let's take a shot. You'd love for this guy to win. And you'd love to have the pass pro solid sorted out on the back end. He's not going to have a chance if you don't have the pass pro sorted out. I mean, this is not a complicated blitz. The pass pro lets him down. I'd say the route is underwhelming. You know, that's definitely not a win by any means. They know he's got to go to third and 12. But just asking him to go back there and throw go balls in tough situations, long yardage. You know, it's a recipe for disaster for anyone. Combine that with the pass pro, I mean, that's tough. Really fortunate not to be an interception. So, next one, third and nine. You see a pattern here with some of these? I mean, the, the his opportunities to throw the ball were disgusting. Third and nine, known good options. What do they call? Double go with a little middle field read. And it turns into an in route. Versus two safeties deep, third and nine. This is a brutal call. Now, an NFL guy who gets paid to play the position all the time is going to throw the check down. Every day, twice on Sunday, we're punting fourth and four. We're feeling okay. I've been in a lot of NFL quarterback rooms where there's a sign that says, punting after a third down completion is okay. That's a mindset. Now, don't even get me started with faking this stuff to throw goes on the outside on third nine. Uh, it just complicates the footwork, everything. But right here, one, two, three, not there. Check it down. Now, do I expect the practice squad wide receiver to be able to do that? No. No, no at all. But I do think that after that play, if I was his friend on the sideline or his peer, I would go, hey, look at this picture. Pause it right there. Next time they all drop out of there and you're in a terrible situation, just throw the check down. Tell your guy, hey, get out. I'm throwing the check down. Because that was there a few times during the game. But, I mean, that's a learned skill, playing in the pocket at a high level for a long time, not 24 hours later. I mean, this is just throwing. This is a good decision not to throw it. Good decision getting something out of it. Really, you know, that, this is one of the better plays. Second and nine. I mean, give me a first down here. We're doing a little bunch. All right, now let's get him on the edge. Naked. I mean, I like the idea of getting him on the edge. I'm not going to lie, but you have to get the edge. So they set this bunch with such a crazy wide edge. Get all sorts of gaps to the right. Well, you have to block it. What is the point person doing of the bunch here? My man, 88. I know that normally, in a normal offense, they would call that a late flat. But this is not a normal offense. Fortunate not to be a pick. What I mean by that is, it's not a normal offense. Don't run a normal offense. Don't run normal nakeds like this because you don't have a normal quarterback back there. You got a guy who, who you think is athletic, who can play, do explosive things. Secure the edge. Just stay in. I know normally this is called here, and we let this guy go to the flat, and then you leak out, and we see teams do it all the time. Talk about it on this channel, late flats. But this isn't the normal guy. Let's secure the edge. Let's allow him to get on the edge. They never allow him to get on the edge. And then if we're coaching quarterbacks, let's tell him, hey, after you fake, you can't run down the line of scrimmage. You got to get some depth. All these dudes are fast now. We're not playing in the ACC anymore where there's every other guy is fast. Every guy is fast. You got to fake this and get depth. Yeah, that guy's closing on him is is fast, but again, you know, who's open here? You can make the argument that the over is open. The over is open for an NFL quarterback, but this guy's running full speed. It's pretty hard to throw on the run full speed. Most times when you're throwing on the run, you get a chance to kind of settle. He's running full speed right there. He gets popped 
because he's so shallow. If he was deeper, you know, you, usually you touch 10 and stay around 10 yards deep from the line of scrimmage on these nakeds. I get it. He's not going to get coached up in a day. But you would think that the naked would be a pretty important part of this game plan. He's open right there running that over at the top of the screen. NFL open. That's NFL open. But when you're running and you're four yards from the line of scrimmage, that's a hard-ass throw. I'm assuming that's who he's throwing it to. Another should have been a pick. I mean, at this point, they've touched more Saints than, and I'm not bashing him. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Next one, again, another design issue. This looks like an NFL offense. We're running two by two. We're running Dragon Lion? Really? Dragon Lion? And I'm sure that he got the, they asked him, hey, are you okay with this play? Yeah, I played this play before. Well, this play is different in the league. It happens fast. You can't take a three-step drop from gun. And I get it that they probably told him, hey, don't do that. But, I mean, three-step? You've got no shot here. For me, this is a read type play. That's a, this is a real quarterback play. No offense to this cat. But this is a terrible ask. Excuse me. Also, let's just assume that he loves this play and that we're going to do it correctly here. For the actual read, I usually say drag inside, a little slant, a little flat. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a whole video on this exact concept because everyone runs it. That's the lion side up top. Normally, middle field closed, you'd want to work away from rotation. That means this safety is coming down. They're blitzing off that edge. Not that I expect him to see that, but you normally the read would just be middle field closed. <clears throat> what side are they rotating to? They're rotating down this way. Okay, let's throw over here. That's great. That throw is there. I, I, It is. If he takes the right footwork, it's there. But if you know you're going to get man coverage, which they played man coverage damn near every snap, it's an easier throw, an easier window to the up top slant. Why? Because this guy clears it out. It's a mini clear. Right here. This is like just a mini dagger, just with slants. This window is way cleaner than this window that has a flat guy going through it. Why? Because this guy drags through the hole. So you have to throw this thing with a little bit of anticipation, which is a big ask. Too big of an ask. For me, if I'm calling this play, I'm telling him, hey, you're throwing it to the X up top. And I get it. It's easy with the clicker. But th these are not new problems. Now, you obviously can't throw a grounder and you can't take the wrong drop and all those things. But hypothetically, if you went up top, you probably have a shot. I don't know what the hell that stem is at the, for the wide receiver. Don't love that, but it worked right there. So again, scheme, obviously performance from the position, but we're calling plays where he's making reads. I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. Obviously can't, you know, two hop a slider either second and 11. If it sounds like I'm getting upset, I'm getting upset. Like this looks like this is not a situation to be successful. Three by one. Here's that same concept we talked about earlier. Go up top. He threw the go the last time. This time he throws the inside fade. I actually think they get lucky in this defense. Again, that ball could be picked. He throws it a little bit out of bounds. They get lucky with the coverage. I'm not sure this is exactly how they would want to play this on the number two normally, but again, what are we faking for? We're faking? I mean, that's pretty decent ball. I mean, maybe catch it in bounds, have a shot. He's obviously comfortable with this scheme. But for me, you know, I think they get fortunate. I mentioned earlier, right here, this guy normally, middle field closed, man, he would be outside leverage on this player. His divider rules would tell him to be outside leverage. Why? Because he's got help inside. And again, I drew this up the last time, but it's a one step, an inside fade, a little stick, and a go. He threw the go the last time. This time he throws the inside fade. For me, you know, it's hard when you're back here. This looks different. This guy's off nine yards, 10 yards. Just catch it and throw it. Grip it and rip it. Okay, tough. Here. Might have a shot. You know, this doesn't look great right here. But this is a this is a perfect look. It doesn't get better for inside fade than man coverage inside with no over-the-top help. So, you know, this is one of those times where, all right, you don't want a completion. You want to take a shot. I probably would have 
taken a completion at some point. I was getting upset watching this game that they didn't call perimeter screens to get him a completion. Taking the shots down the field every single time, at some point the DBs start to realize, hey, they're not even going to throw it underneath. They're just chunking it. Again, you do this full slide protection. Don't even <laughs> the full slide protection with the back coming from the opposite side and a play fake for the back to block the defensive end in a mint front. No bueno. Not good. It's not. This is a bad feeling throwing a, a, a ball right here where you got a guy who's coming unblocked in your face. You got to trust that the running back's going to get over there, and he barely does. I mean, it's just a. It's a. It's a bizarre constructed play and for them to obviously love it like he obviously told them hey I really like this play or they told them this is what we're going to do third and 11 now we've got some weird bunch again you know the schemes here now they're asking him to make a read on really a drive concept like this is really a drive concept we get a drive by the outside guy of the bunch the number three runs an in we got a point running the wheel I mean I get it that there are people open but does it feel weird to ask the practice squad wide receiver to read this from the pocket on third and 12? It feels weird to me talking about it. Like, I, I don't get it. I get it that this would be a decent play if we had someone who played quarterback. I mean, he does a decent job right here just manipulating the pocket. Feels like someone's getting walked into him. He steps up. That's nice. Escape out. Give you a shot. Then all of a sudden, that guy's faster than I remember. I mean, <laughs> that dude can run. But I mean, I, I honestly, I get it that they probably don't have a whole lot of calls for this situation. But asking even a young quarterback on to make this type of read, this to me is really where the play is. You know, high-low right here. You get a little wheel here that's wide open, but... I can't imagine you ever having to throw that. And then you burst the back out this way. I mean, anytime they're bur you're doing like burst with the back or the back's running a unique check down, that's, that's high level stuff in the league. Like let the guy just throw a normal check down and punt it or throw a screen. Uh, watching this, I, I just, I started feeling bad. I, I didn't, I felt bad for him before the game, but I just felt like he didn't have a chance to be successful with some of these play calls. They're calling, they're running a normal offense. It's not a normal offense. You gotta manipulate opportunities for shots. You gotta manipulate completions. You can't ask him to run drive burst. I mean, yeah, it's there, but <laughs> what? I, I just, the level of empathy as far as just like what his teammates must be thinking, what the coaches are thinking, you know, so come back again. Now we're throwing. Now we get a pick. What do they call? Double go. I mean, it, you know, you just need to throw a hitch. And I know it's easy with the clicker. I acknowledge it. But you can't throw goes like this. You got to tell him. And you really do. And I mean, I'm not talking about just a quarterback coach on blast, just the coordinator on blast. His peers, the other quarterbacks. Anybody who has anything to do with the offense needs to say, hey, if it's not there, if they're running out of it, covering the go, just throw the check down. Just throw the check down. It is a screen. It's a glorified screen. And I get it. And again, I get the play fake again. I mean, I just, I can't. But just throw the check down. You, you got to be able to look at the pitcher in the game and do that. And I, trust me, I get it. I'm not fooling myself into thinking the guy's going to make perfect reads every single play, but they're asking him to throw these deep balls down the field. At least give him the artillery to be successful. It doesn't, it's not a 100% we're throwing the go. It's a, hey, if it's there, throw it. If you like the matchup, throw it. This is the cornerback running on top of him. Just, if you don't feel good about it, throw the check down. It just, it, I was, I was getting so frustrated for him, for their teammates. I was getting upset at the play calling. I was getting upset that he's in this position from the league, from the quarterbacks in that organization. Second and 13. I mean, let him throw on first down. 
This is the best play call of the game, in my opinion, by far. This is the type of stuff they should have been doing from jump. This should have been the first third down of the game. Unbalanced line. Look at it. Awesome. Tight end on the left. Roll to the right. Tight end screen. I mean, dial it up again. I would just call it again the next play. I don't care. I mean, that's the completion of his career. It's a. This is a great play call. This is what the game should have looked like. If you're going to go out there with three wide receivers, which I wouldn't have, but if you're going to try to be a normal offense, you got to get crazy with the unbalanced, with the screen game, with the perimeter screen game, getting him some completions. He must have felt so good right there, just like he could breathe. I mean, look. Oh, my God. Get the pulling guard. I mean, it's a well-designed play. Nice blocking downfield. That's as good as it got. Now, I would have liked to see more of these types of formations with him on first down, giving him a shot. Don't love this play call. Don't love this play design. Again, why not? They're moving him on the edge. Good idea. Let's secure the edge. We don't need a flat. You got to secure the edge. He's getting blasted. That's it. To me, this is a health and safety thing that the coordinator, the play callers, the play design here is not helping. Look at the edge. You got the wide edge with the wing and the back. There's no way you should give up the edge. Pulling linemen, faking, giving up the edge. I mean, look, you got three guys out there. That doesn't help that the right tackle does whatever the right tackle is doing there. But again, I just don't understand the design. I mean, you can see he just, this is the game speed thing where you just don't realize how fast these guys will close on you. It's open. It's open for an NFL quarterback right here to set his feet and throw that. But to think that, you know, anybody who isn't is going to do that, that's, that's not fair. To me, that's as much as a of a design. This is a design thing as much as it is, you know, an interception. Yeah, he threw it. I get it. It's always going to be on the quarterback. But what what's he supposed to do? I mean, he's open. They're running like weird corner inserts. Like, look at this corner down here to the bottom. He inserts, the wing inserts and runs it. Like, are we getting fancy? <laughs> I just... I don't really get it. I, you just you're not going to have a chance to be successful like this, and he was never going to have a chance to be successful. But I still think that they could have done more to help him. I feel like they let him down. You got to secure the edge a few times in this game to give him a shot to get on the perimeter, and they never did. Third and twelve, last one. Same play we talked about. Fade down here to the bottom, inside fade up top of the number two. Again, could he catch it and rip the one-step look up top? Yes. A, a quarterback could do that. But he's trying to find the laces. You got to grip it and rip it. And again, you know, those are not the easiest throws in the world, those catch and grip and rips. You can see him trying to find the laces here. Again, we got the back coming right in front of us. We've got the tight end, like chip blocking, it looks like, which really all he does is then chip the guy right into the throwing lane for the one-step look. Like, you can't make up some of this design stuff. Really, like, we've already run this play twice, haven't completed it. Catch it and throw the one-step look up top. Well, the tight end chips the defensive end. Now he's in the lane. If you just let him rush, he's going to run right by you, fly right by you, hit the brakes. I just, I feel bad. I, I really do. There is no other way about it. I feel pissed, upset, bad for Kendall Hilt, Hinton. But, man, so tough. So, that's a wrap. A different type of video today. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, I really didn't that much, if you couldn't tell. But uh, I think that there are some nuggets to learn from. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.